Can I taste your juice? Hey folks, P. Bissardo, and I, I apologize for the voice. Um, I have literally been sick since I got back from Canada. I don't know, I caught some Canadian crud up there, but um, I figured before we got back to reviewing, let me put the, together a video on the CVE, the Canadian Vape Expo, uh, talk a little bit about it, because I did do some kind of cool interviews uh, in this video. Not a whole lot of uh, vendor and product interviews, but uh, a couple interviews that I that I thought were, were kind of cool and I wanted to share with you. The one in particular is going to be the interview with Brent Stafford, and it's, it's, it's a rather long interview, but you know, Brent's videos with Regulator Watch, they're very, very condensed, they're very, very short they're very professionally done mine not so much so um when i was talking to him i thought the information was so good and i thought the the, the views and opinions were so good i just wanted to include all of it in this video so that's what you're going to see a little bit later on so we're going to start this video not with the uh, the cve the canadian vape expo but the cva the canadian vape association and that gets very very confusing after a while but cva held their uh, their second i believe now their second annual uh, hero awards and I think this is a I think this is a wonderful event. Okay, so what they do is uh, they select some members of the community that have done a lot for you know activism and advocacy, and they they give them hero awards at at this award ceremony. And I think the award ceremony is done very very well. It's very professional. It's um, it's very classy, and and I like this. I like this because you know there's a lot of people. Um, who do a lot of things for the uh, the vaping industry and who are not necessarily thanked and they are not necessarily paid uh, for the things that they do. So to be um, to be recognized in in, in this kind of way, uh, I, I think is, is is a wonderful thing, and I'd love to see this happen more and more uh, all throughout the, the vaping industry. So um, that was like night one. So they had like a um, they had the dinner, the award ceremony, a cocktail hour, and then the DJ after that. And I think um, Ross and the entire crew from um, VCA, the Vaping Canadian Association, uh, do do a fantastic job with this event. And I'd like I'd like to see it to uh, to continue. Something else that I saw from the uh, the VCA and from ECTA and from Inikin um, at the event were these um, these battery safety cases uh, being handed out. And you can see up there at the top here, uh, I'll actually have to go this way, not for resale. So these were uh, being given away for free. And from what I understand, uh, any of the shops that are associated with, um, uh, I, th I think it's ECTA or VCA, uh, have these available for free up there in Canada. And I think this is a terrific thing because I, uh, you know, I continue to say that a lot of these battery issues that we're having is not necessarily due to the uh, to the mod or to the device, but it's due to uh, the fact that people have unprotected batteries or spare batteries that they're carrying around. Those batteries find keys or some kind of metal in your pocket or your purse, and they wind up venting. Okay, they short themselves out and they vent. So uh, these been being given out at the event and uh, stores that uh, that that support uh, VCA and perhaps ECTA. Um, so I, I think this is a really cool thing, and I'm I'm glad to see stuff like this happening as well. I also also have to give a shout out to my pal Dave uh, Ball up there in Canada. Um, during the uh, the Hero Awards, uh, Dave went up there on stage and he uh, he presented me with this shirt uh, and Dimitri with the same shirt. Dimitri's shirt is obviously smaller than mine at this point, but um, this is something that uh, Dave told me a long time ago. Dave actually came up with this uh, this phrase. Um, and it's something that I've used, uh, I think, on my Facebook cover, too. So let me back up here a little bit and show you this. So this is United We Vape. And then on the back side, it says Divided We Smoke, okay? And I, I think the idea there is for, you know, all, all vapers and all advocacy groups to really to kind of come together, put aside the drama, and fight for the common goal, which is to save vaping as we know it in its current form today. So, uh, Dave, thank you so much for the shirt. I will wear it with pride. Now, before we get to the important stuff, let's get to the very important stuff, Skechers Gate. You guys have heard a lot, uh, or you maybe you have seen a lot about me and Dimitri and Skechers uh, lately. What the hell is going on with that? Uh, I even had the, uh, the contest, the first person who came up to me at the event... Uh, wearing Skechers was going to win a Vupu uh, Alpha One. Uh, let me tell you, there were there were throngs of people running up to me with Skechers. Not really, but uh, that's beside the point. See, Dimitri is under the impression I don't know where he got this from that that Skechers are like old people or dad shoes. Um, I think Skechers are are extremely stylish and and very very comfortable 
and kind of hip shoes, not 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 old people or dad shoes. But I mean, Dimitri, for as much as I respect him uh, in the world of advocacy, not not a whole lot of respect in the world of uh, of style and fashion. So uh, I did talk to a couple people there about Skechers, and we did wind up uh, giving away the the Alpha One. And by the way, they have sent additional uh, Alpha Ones. So uh, look for a contest uh, or a not a contest uh, coming up on this very very soon. Um, as a matter of fact, in this video, we will find out who won the last not a contest. So stick around for that. But right now. Skechers Gate. Show your shoes again. Show your shoes. Skechers. And just say that one more time. What, what, what Skechers represent in Italy? Good. Uh, in Italy, yes. actually, Skechers yes. are the trending brand. The trending brand. Yes, of course. Trending brand. Because if you don't wear a pair of Skechers, right. no girls are going to look at you. The girls don't even look at you without the Skechers on. Right? And they love Skechers because if you take care of your feet, take care of your feet, yeah. You always take care of your woman, right? Right. So, if you don't wear that. And I bet you, with your accent and, and wearing sketches in America, you're like fighting the women off, right? Yes. You see where I was seated, right? Yeah, I know. So, yeah. And, and tell me, tell me, uh, where from? Where in Italy are you from? From Milan. From no, Milan. The cities of the trends, the, the moda, the fashion. And, and and the flavors. And the flavors. Of course, of the course. flavors. Okay. Flavor art. The flavor course. art. Okay. <laughs> now, did you want to say anything there, D Damien? Did you, did you want to say anything about? So let me be the voice of reason here. Oh okay? my God! Here it comes. So here it comes. Marco right. obviously uh, is the only person in the entire Toronto CBE <laughs> show <laughs> that is wearing schedules. One. But yeah. He's the only person. But what? And he's from Italy. Oh, I mean, what does that say? Please, I mean, it says please, he's let me cool. Finish. He's please cool. Finish. Marco won the mod. By the way. No way. <laughs> Marco talks about getting women with sketchers. Yes, but, but keep in mind, Phil, you look nothing like Marco. I so you have know. to keep that in really mind. Know. Know. <laughs> so the shoes are not going to save you. That's all I'm trying to say. That's really mean. He lost all that weight, and now he's kind of an asshole a little bit. <laughs> yeah, he is. Just a little bit. But uh, thank you, Marco, thank You're you, very thank you. And, and I know in Italy, they're all about style in Italy. Yes. They're all about quality things. Yes, I mean, this is where Ferrari comes from. Of course. This is where Lamborghini comes from. And now Skechers, Skechers. trending in Italy. Of course. Thank you, Marco, from Flavor Art, from Italy, from Milan, Italy. You're very welcome. Thank You're you, very welcome. welcome. Thank you. So we found, we found several people wearing Skechers. No, 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 easy, easy. What? Several is maybe an exaggeration. Well, uh, just in this group right here, we have two. one pair. Two pair, three pair, oh, hold on a second. and four pair. Hold on a second. This is your wife. It doesn't count. Number one. That's automatically eliminated. Why? It what? doesn't count. Why? Because she wears cool Thomas. shoes. He's a shop owner. He's automatically eliminated. He doesn't count either. Right. But, but, <laughs> but, my point was not your... that sketches are not comfortable and they feel good. And they're cool and shoes, you... man. That wasn't my point. They're my not point dad is shoes. That they're they're not... old people shoes. They are not old people shoes. And once again, shoes. All right. my point. Style is she. Look at this. Congratulations. Thank you. You won yourself a Vupu Alpha One Ooh. for wearing really, really school, cool shoes. They are awesome shoes. They are I awesome love my shoes, shoes, right? Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. You're welcome. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. okay. Shut up, dude. Shut up. Dude. Shut up. We will be getting serious uh, very soon here, but first, uh, I did run into a very, very good friend of mine, uh, Mr. Chen Ping Wang from the Legal Vape 4000 video. Here he comes. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chen Ping Wang. Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're <laughs> working with a pre pre Fle Flavor Art North America. <laughs> Robin North America, try the new past, past uh, crazy flavor. Oh, it's my grasses. Okay. <laughs> And uh, we do very <laughs> special deer, MOQ, 6 million kilogram. I give you free shipping, so no problem. Okay, we bye miss bye. We miss Chen Ping Wang in the videos. We got to get Don't more worry, Chen Ping Wang. New Regal Vape, 6 million coming soon. <laughs> of course, that is not uh, Chen Ping Wang. He only plays the part of Chen Ping Wang in some of my videos. Uh, that's actually Richard Hong, a hell of a nice guy from uh, Flavor Art North America. Um, now I talked to uh, to Shy a little bit from uh, Dash Vapes about their, uh, their stomp the butt effort that they have there at the uh, the Dash Vape uh, booth and a couple other booths. So uh, I'm talking to him, uh, interviewing him a little bit, and I do apologize for the audio quality. There's a lot going on around us uh, as I do this little interview. And uh, Charlie comes walking by from CVE, Canadian Vape Expo. I talk to him a little bit in this uh, piece as well. And then we go into the um, the conference room where we held the uh, the discussion panel. Uh, right before the panel, I talked to Charlie a little bit as well. I am here with uh, Mr. Shy from Dash Vapes, right? Dash Vapes, of course, yeah. How did the show go for you? It was amazing. It was crazy. Uh, 100,000 square feet, 100,000 square feet. 
give away a lot of starter kits for cigarettes. It was awesome. So that is, that is something that you do at all the shows, right? Every the, uh, show. So it's like a stop the butts type thing, yep. and it's a free starter kit for anybody who like just crushes their back. Exactly. So they bring their pack of cigarettes to our booth, or the date meets booth, and they stop the butts, and we give them a free starter. Kit. That's fantastic. And do we have do we have all do we have the uh, the evidence right here? We do. So this is just from our booth. Wow, it's like pretty heavy. Uh, Canadians have funny looking cigarette packs. Yeah, they do, they do. <laughs> Kind of give you the depth of it's, it's actually how deep. a lot yeah. this, this is, is inside here. This is only one of boots that collected it. We give away every single kit. Look at that. Look at that. I can sell this at the border. <laughs> yeah, you probably can. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's great, that's fantastic. Oh, I mean, I, I love that you guys are still doing that. And I think it's really good for all of us. So please don't stop doing what you're doing. And I think the, uh, I, I, we, we love to see the event. We love how mature it is. We love what, how you guys and Charlie are involved in keeping the, uh, you know, the challenge labeling out, keeping the brand improvement out. And that's why we want to get some of your tools and want to do that. Right? There's Charlie right now. There he goes. There's the guy on the mic. Give him Charlie! Hey! <laughs> We were just talking about the Stomp the Butts. Yes, how are we doing? We're, we're doing really good. I'm going to sell those at the border. <laughs> yeah. We're going to stop them at 300. Absolutely. Yeah, but uh, yeah, and keep, keep doing what you guys are doing. Keep this, uh, this event really, really mature and professional. And um, we'll keep coming up and supporting you. Thanks so much. And thank you very much. What are you doing this guy on camera? <laughs> it is good seeing you. If you really want to embarrass someone, that, that's the other part of Ronnie over there. Get him on camera. Shit, man. <laughs> he, does, he does a lot of the heavy lifting, same as Sabrina. That's Joey over there on the stage. Yeah, we're meeting everyone. Yeah, it's a team effort all the time, and this guy's yeah, this crazy. Where's the, where's the next event going to be? Edmonton, 100% happening yeah. again. Yeah. Uh, in between, we're doing our best. We'd like to do, you know, one show in between them. We don't know. We'd like to do Vancouver. Vancouver would be it's awesome. Impossible to do. Everybody's asking us to go to Vancouver. Yeah, we only have two people vaping at a time. In the, in the basement, the big... Seriously, only two people vaping at a time? Yeah, you can do it, but only two people at a time. That's, just, that's fine. Me and Dimitri. <laughs> see a problem with that. Yeah. We'll keep working on it. Okay? Thank you very much. And uh, let us know when the next event is and we'd love to come back up and support. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Alright, thanks for watching. Yeah. We'll see you again soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how cool is it that, you know, I'm here at the show right now, and it turns out that our six-year friend uh, notification came up on Facebook. How cool is that? That is really cool. Like, and I'm gonna take a, you, uh, you beat me to the punch. I know. I'm going to take a couple of those photos and put it in, that, in this video. It's just, crazy. Just to prove that I've known you for six years. Do you remember where that was? It was uh, Juicy Vapor. Juicy Vapor, yeah. yeah back crazy. when Juicy Vapor was called Juicy Vapor. Yes. Well, I guess the store is still Juicy Vapor, but the, the liquid line is Nexteria now. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. That's yeah. cool, though. Yeah, it is cool. How's this Nexteria? Do you have anything in do you have anything important to say? Important? No. Interesting? <laughs> no. Yeah, nothing no. important, nothing no, interesting? I mean, we just, uh, in this room here, we just had our, uh, or ECTA had their annual meeting, which is pretty cool. And we're Good. about to have a panel format seminar um, with you two guys on the panel, of course, and right. a bunch of other distinguished companies and individuals. Yeah, so I'm outclassed on this one, huh, probably? I don't think so, man. You're gonna, this is going to be pretty cool. We want some uh, lively constructive debate. Well, and, if anything, I'm good for comic relief. Of course. We need all we need a nice balance. Yeah. <laughs> Can't be too bitter. How's the show going for you? Fantastic. It's yeah. well attended. Everyone's very well behaved. And uh, we have, I think, zero incidents of copyright infringement, children targeting. We've been pretty strict at the last few shows and people are getting the hint finally. And that is absolutely why we continue to support this Thanks. event. It is a fantastic event. Everybody <laughs> looks happy in there. It's it's much bigger and more spread out this year, which makes it like even more comfortable to walk around, but it seems to be very, very well attended. We're just over 100,000 square feet this time. Last year's was 66,000 square feet. I thought you were going to say we were just over 100,000 people. That would be a, <laughs> that would be impressive. I'd be a lot right? bigger smile. Yeah. 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 And, and Dimitri's yeah. appearance fee would go up too. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be half the country at this point. <laughs> yeah, but that's terrific. Keep it up, Thank Charlie, you. and we'll keep coming back and supporting you. Thanks event. so much, guys. Absolutely. <laughs> now, I said we didn't do a lot of um, uh, vendor or manufacturer interviews in this video, and we really didn't. But uh, we did find some nice uh, stab wood, um, like mechanical squonk boxes uh, from Rock'em Mods. So uh, we did talk to uh, Joffrey about uh, his mods a little bit. Who are you talking to right now, Damien? Let's get, let's get at least one interview. I'm going. talking to Rock'em. Rock'em. Rock'em Mods. And uh, you can see here uh, two versions, a Delrin version and a Stabilized Wood version. The stab woods are beautiful. They're really nice. Here, grab that one there too. That one almost looks like my uh, top hat. It really does. Right, it doesn't it? Does. It almost does. It matches a lot. 
Really nice work. And you hand make all these by yourself? Yeah, CNC for 20 minutes and 8 hours of sanding. Uh, nice little soft uh, squeeze bottle inside. I really like these new bottles. Yeah, I do too. Maybe you can uh, refit your Rio with them. Oh, one single connection. You see it goes on the bottom and comes up and connects to the 510. Yep. Really so nice. if uh, people were interested in these, where would they get them? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. You're gonna have to make more. That's what you're gonna have to do. I'm trying to make more as right. much as I can. So where could they get them? I mean, do you have a Facebook? Do you have a website? Oh, you have to ask me on Facebook, Geoffrey Bigubé. That's the only way. That's the only way. I, I can't make enough. You can't make enough. I can't make enough. Well, why are you here talking to me? I think you should go home and start making some more. Right. I mean, you're right All now. right, let's go. Okay, see ya. <laughs> awesome stuff. Yeah, cool. Okay, so now we are going to get a little bit more serious. Um, Dimitri just got back from the, uh, the VTA conference. Uh, so there's that. There's the flavor band that just happened in San Francisco. Uh, and now another area in California. And then there's also the um, the right to be smoke free uh, lawsuit. Uh, the results came in and they were not good. So uh, because Dimitri was there, uh, I did want to talk to him about the, those three things. And of course, it starts with a little bit of comedy, but then it does get serious. Can we... Um can we first show the, uh, the your new juice line there? I'd like to introduce to you um, Phil's Love Juice. Um, this was handcrafted, handmade. Handmade, small batches All only. amateur. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, if you'd like to zoom in into the label, you can yeah. see it has uh, some really nice subliminal messages yeah, on the label. I'll try to take, uh, I'll take a couple photos too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I really enjoy having this in my mouth. Yeah. It's, uh, Creamy and robust. Yes. Uh, with Italian flair. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's uh, the famous Feels Love Juice. Yeah, that's terrific. Coming soon. Yeah. Now um, we should get serious here for a second. Yeah, we need to get serious. You're, uh, you're, the color balance is way off, but that's okay. I'll see if I can fix it. In. Actually, no, I'm just going to make you look orange and yellow. Um, um, so you just got huge. back. <laughs> you look fantastic. Thank you. And I continue to hear it over and over and over again. I'm sorry. So it's getting a little tiring at this point. Yeah. Thank okay. you very much. But you I do look great. really good. I'm Thank glad. You. I'm glad you're feeling great. I know you're off of meds now, mm -hmm. and right. Um, but you were just in uh, Washington for the. Uh, it was the the VTA event or conference, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell tell us a little bit about what happened there, uh, what you experienced, and and if you were able to accomplish or achieve anything. So this was my fourth time uh, on the Hill. Um, we go every year trying to reach our representatives, congressmen and senators. Um, this was my second time with the VTA. This was the second conference that VTA had, and on Tuesday we actually had uh, just various panels that discussed about the FDA regulations, uh, market. Uh, advertising, uh, litigation, legislation, um, and it was done very well. A lot of great speakers, including Senator Ron Johnson, which gave the keynote address, and uh, it was really powerful and really inspiring for, for everybody that was there. And it kind of renewed my 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 desire to keep fighting for this product. And, and when, when, when we do events like this, I think everybody that attends um, has the same feeling. On Wednesday, uh, we took the hill with my group, the Tennessee Smoke Free Association. We had a delegation of 13 shops there, and we went around to talk to our Congress people and our, our senators and ask them to help us with the FDA deeming regulations, which will essentially ban all these products from, from the market in a year and three months. I mean, the countdown is real. And uh, it was very refreshing to see this year versus other years how we've worked to educate the politicians. And that's one thing that everybody can do. You don't have to be an advocate. You don't have to be attached to a group. You don't have to be a member of any group. Um, picking up the phone and arranging a meeting, even if it's with the staffers. In, in fact, I prefer the staffers because the staffers are younger people. They understand the product. They understand the technology. Most likely, they know somebody that vapes in their age group as well, too. And tell them uh, what these FDA deeming regulations will do. So part of our trip was to ask for a two-year extension. We had these letters given to our politicians that they could sign, send to um, newly appointed commissioner of the FDA, Scott Gottlieb, and ask him to delay the implementation of these regulations for two years, give us enough time to work a legislative uh, solution. Uh, we also got a new co-sponsor for HR 1136 uh, in uh, Representative Scott Desjardins, which is actually a doctor, which is a huge push for us as well too. And um, we had uh, Senator Lamar Alexander always supporting the industry. Our other senator in Tennessee, Bob Corker, was kind of on the fence, uh, but he, he got a new staffer as well too. And uh, and his staffer, his her dad died from lung cancer. She knows people that vape, and uh, we got him on our board as on board as well too. So it was a very positive message. Um, 
I highly encourage for those of you that you can, you don't even have to come when we do the fly-ins, but please contact your representatives and let them know that this product saved your life and we need their support. So you, you said in the past, you said to me uh, that, you, that you have hope for some relief this year. I do. Now, do you continue to have that hope for relief? And um, you got to talk about the uh, the right to be smoke-free sure. uh, lawsuit sure. and what happened there. It seems like every time we have like good news coming out of the UK, we immediately get bad news from the US. So ironically enough, two days ago, the UK health system announced that uh, they plan to eliminate combustible tobacco by 2025. And part of their solution to the problem is vaping and electronic cigarettes, and they're highly recommended. Two days later, the RTB smoke-free uh, slash Nicopure joint lawsuit against the FDA uh, got a rule and the judge in that case ruled against us on every count. It was a little bit surprising, a little bit defeating for a couple of hours, honestly. Uh, we worked very hard, especially me and you, Phil, you know, through Sevilla USA to become top donor in that in that uh, lawsuit. Uh, but we kind of expected it as well, too. It could have gone either way. That's what courts all are about. Uh, in fact, in this lower court, that just gives us more hope and more um, desire to move on to a higher court where we can express and present the data and all the data that's come out uh, in a bigger light and try to get some more relief. Uh, we'll find out next week when we meet with the plaintiffs and the attorneys what's going to be the next step if we're going to file an appeal, which most likely we will. We just want all the state associations to participate. If you have 100 stores in, in, your, in your state association, everybody gives $100. We've got $10,000 from each state association. We can fund this pretty quick and let's get it over with. Um, having said that, that's not the only plan of attack that we have. Obviously, we have uh, a new commissioner, we have a new CDC director, and we have a new Surgeon General as well, too. So we have a multi-pronged approach right now. We have legislation that is pending with H.R. 1136. The Cole Bishop language remains uh, in there, moving the predicate date, which will be voted at the end of September. We're reaching out to Secretary Price. We're reaching it out to Scott Gottlieb. We're reaching out to the new Surgeon General. We're asking him to slow down, take a look at the data, take a look at what's uh, going on with the FDA and try to give us some relief. I do believe we're going to get maybe an extension uh, or some sort of a relief. In fact, I feel more positive today than I felt uh, in the past again. And I know I keep saying that uh, until we see some kind of results, you know, I won't rest. But uh, yeah, I still feel confident that, uh, that more and more the tide is shifting. Okay. And I guess the last thing I got to uh, ask you about, because I think it was pretty devastating, is the uh, the flavor ban in San Francisco. Yeah, in Oakland last night. So uh, we had San Francisco and it's just the ball is rolling. Uh, and uh, Oakland passed it last night as well too. People have to understand that this is a organized attack by the so-called, ironically, public health groups. Tobacco Free Kids and the other groups are behind this. They attempted to do this at a state level last year, but thankfully we're organized on a state level and we're able to defeat it. So they sat down and they restructured as we should as well too, to defend these. Um, and they said, well, maybe states a little bit of high hope. Let's start hitting these municipalities where we know we're gonna get support. So they go to these mostly democratic run city councils and they say, we gotta think of the kids and we gotta protect the kids. Obviously the politicians think that they're doing something good and it's gonna gain them votes by banning the flavors. Um, so they're trying to pass it in municipality <coughs> to municipality. And the goal here is, and people really gotta pay attention to this, what they wanna do is pass it in four or five cities and then eventually next year they're going to go to the state level and say well look San Francisco has a ban Oakland has a ban LA has a ban might as well ban into the entire entire state and that's how they try to pass the legislation so now we have to add another layer of protection for the industry we got the federal with VTA and everything that we're doing on a federal level and then we have the individual state associations that are protecting our rights with lobbyists now we have to go down one notch to reach what they're trying to do and that is to protect our cities and our local municipalities so it's going to take a little bit more boost on the ground and more of the shops that are in that area to get organized in order to defeat that. Okay, and any, any last uh, words of wisdom as far as what people can do as, as vapors or as organizations or as companies, anything? I, I, th I think we're seeing, uh, uh, one, one of the things that I saw at the VTA conference is I saw a lot of people there that are coming together. Casa was there, Representative <coughs> AVA was there. Excuse um, me. So it looks like, uh, like the groups are working together uh, and there's a lot that goes in the back as well too that a lot of people don't see. Uh, so I'm very positive that, that uh, we're going to be working more and more together with these national organizations. Uh, as far as vapors, obviously contact your 
representatives, I don't know how many times I can tell you that your vote is very important. And uh, and these uh, passionate stories of people quitting smoking uh, might might change the uh, the idea of the politician for the kids as well too. We keep talking about the kids, but we can't forget the parents. I mean, the parents are the ones that are raising the kids. If they die, the kids' uh, future is in jeopardy as well too. So yeah, keep reaching to your representatives and get involved. Um, the last thing I want to say is don't give up. Uh, if if you see me keep fighting, everybody should keep fighting. So uh, I feel I feel still positive, and uh, and you should feel positive as well too, because we are doing a good thing. And in the end, I think that good will always be rewarded. So that was amazing. That was serious. Yeah. Anything funny? Uh, there is an underwear uh, booth out here yes. uh, that has uh, uh, actually uh, it's called like a cooling pocket. Yeah. <laughs> I really yeah. don't know. What's... That pocket is. I'm gonna go buy some underwear. Yeah, the... I am gonna go buy some underwear, and I'll maybe we'll do a review on it. Maybe later. do a review. Oh, we're gonna have to adjust the size of that yes, pocket. Yes, we will. The, the pocket's huge. But yeah. on the other hand, you right. can actually put your mod inside there you as can. well too. So you, you know, we don't have to. Right. Phil, that, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, hole is way too big for you. Do you have something smaller for Phil? No, it's not. That's not funny. Inside you have the full unit of my package. This is a full unit. The That's... mesh lining of Saks underwear. And yeah. of course, that one here will be the fabric of Lulet. And this also, by the way, I just yes. want to put it out there. Yeah, this it out. also doubles as a mod. <laughs> it's, a mod there, then, you know, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. Thanks, bud. You're welcome. Okay, so now, as promised, the uh, the Brent Stafford interview, uh, the guy behind Regulator Watch. Um, you know, like I said earlier, this is going to be kind of a long interview, but uh, I, I thought the uh, the information was good. I thought the insight was good. Um, and Brent's pieces are, are so short and they're so condensed and so well done. Uh, I just really wanted him, the, the interviewer, to have the, the opportunity to be interviewed and share all of his thoughts and opinions. But I, I feel like... I feel like this is all wrong. If I'm going to do a, a Brent um, Stafford interview, uh, I really should do it the right way. This is Phil Bissardo from TasteYourJuice.com. Brent Stafford from Regulator Watch. Who is he? Where did he come from? And what are his opinions? I start the interview by asking Brent a little bit about his background. Uh, well, that's an interesting question. I started in television right out of high school. It was crazy, 1988. So I uh, went to work for a CBC affiliate. That's in Canada, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. And I, I was shooting news in... I mean, out of diapers almost. It was, I hung out a helicopter shooting forest fires. I interviewed prime ministers of Canada. You know, I did all of that, and I was fortunate to be able to do all that. And then um, about seven or eight years into it, I decided I needed an education. Uh, I, I'm interviewing, you know, world leaders, and I didn't even have, like, a college degree in right? And I, so I, I knew I needed more, so I went to university, uh, and I got a graduate degree. And, and it's kind of crazy. It's a, it's a very left wing degree, it's postmodernism, critical theory. So the, the kind of the poisonous ideologies that are operating right now that you see in the US, you know, really responsible for a lot of the problems are based in you know postmodernist uh, critical theory. It's all it all goes back to Marx. It's it's very much socialism on its part. Okay, uh, that's about enough of that, uh, but th that was an ode to you, uh, Mr. Brent Stafford. Um, besides, i got to get out of this uh, monkey suit. On with the interview! So was, was Brent Stafford a smoker? Brent Stafford started smoking because of a girl <laughs> uh, when I was 21. I was an idiot. I mean, I was 21 years old when I started smoking cigarettes. And it's at like a late age, too. I mean, yeah, it really yeah, is. for sure. Right? Most people get hooked much earlier. Yeah. Right? So, no, it was a girl uh, to look cool. It was Dunhills. And uh, by the by the time I quit smoking, which was tw no, I know, 20 years, 20 years later, something like that, I was a two-pack-a-day smoker for about 15 years. So th th did the cigarettes last longer than the girl did? Oh, yeah. <laughs> So how um, when when you quit? Okay, did you quit because of vaping, or or did you quit? Did, there was a cold turkey, or what, how did you quit? Good question. I didn't quit with vaping. Okay. Um, I, I quit with Champex. Okay. And, yeah, I did. That and worked for you. It worked. It worked for the quit part. Okay. Amazingly, it mm -hmm. worked for the quit part. The, the long story ab about this, I'll share this with your viewers. I never talk about this much, but um, you know, I quit drinking, and and I did that first. That was the first step to get 
you know, my life in, in order. Okay. And then, and then a year after that, I got my health in order. So changed the way I ate and, and everything, lost 40 pounds in, in four months. And I did that specifically to quit smoking. I knew that I would not be able to quit smoking unless I got the, the last part of the, you know, physical body in the shape because I knew sm quitting smoking was going to be a disaster. Okay. And so it was three years then I quit the smoking and it just drove me bonkers. So I quit with Champex, I went bonkers with it. It put my sobriety in jeopardy in fact and I, I took a look around in desperation and I happened to have an old vape pen, like a second generation in, in, a, in a cupboard uh, that would have never had worked for me, you know, with two packs a day going to that. Sure. But after I'd gotten all this, the nicotine out of me and I got the smoking out of me and I'd made this commitment to quit to save my life, I, I picked up a vape and was surprised how much it actually worked. And, and I did it and it kept me smoke free. It kept you smoke free. So is that what got you interested in, in vaping and the vaping industry? No, I mean, Regulator Watch, um, you know, produces content, uh, albeit not a lot right now on anything else, but vaping, uh, our television content's highly intensive in terms of the amount of time. It, it takes like 40 hours, easy for sure, to produce a single piece. And I, I believe that. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. And our quality, I mean, our quality is, is very, outstanding. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So, and we've got to get it right, you know. So, um, so we curate content across a bunch of regulatory agencies. We will produce some television stuff, say, on, you know, pipelines, and we just did a climate change one, which I connected with vaping. But we are all in on the vaping issue, and it has nothing to do with the fact that I vape. It has everything to do with the fact that there is no better story for Regulator Watch to cover than an industry that is not yet regulated and is facing regulations thrown on top of them. And then there's so much about the issue that is just prime for us because you've got left, you've got right, you've got it's happening in different countries, why is this happening, you've got media telling one story that's erroneous, well what's really the truth, you've got the divide that goes on within public health, which is just stunning, we've covered that, like with inside public health there's this massive chasm that's going on, right? right? And that battle that's happening is just amazing to cover. So, you know, it has nothing, you know, if there's going to be like maybe five people that know I'm a vapor. Okay. Right. So, so Regulator Watch really has nothing to do with vaping necessarily, but it has everything to do with the fact that this is, we're fine here with the camera, don't worry. It has everything to do with the fact that this is a Regulator Watch news story. I mean, this is about regulation, right? This is about regulation. And it's one of the best stories to cover at this point, right? You can't get better. You can't get better. Right. What is what is Brent Stafford's take on what's going on based on everything that you've seen and everybody you've talked to? Oh, wow. Uh, and to condense that into 30 seconds, would I, I guess, would you? <laughs> oh, I could make this as long. <laughs> See, I don't have to condense mine. My videos are known to be long. <laughs> well, if you, if you watch our content, it's in there. It's embedded in there. Um, first of all, I would have to say that there's no way of getting around this. It's a left issue. The left seems to have a problem with vaping. Well, they don't seem to have a problem with vaping. They have a real problem with vaping. It, it is a... And to get at that fully, it's really hard to understand. And why has public health got a problem with it? You know, look, look at public health. Just them and themselves. Public health is is based on um, a very progressive notion. And progressivism is, a, is from the left. And that idea is that government can make a difference in your life. Not only that, but government has a responsibility to tell you what to do so you don't do something to make your life better. Oh, even more than that, public health has the right or the responsibility to not only tell you what to do to make your life better if you stop doing it, but to stop you from doing something because it's going to make somebody else's life better, even a third party. And that's where the third party is where they base so much of, of their uh, the reasoning behind it. So that so that's it. I can take away your liberty because what you're doing is harming another. 
problem with vaping is they haven't proven that. That's that's the fundamental issue. And it's and it's the first thing with vaping that got me starting to cover it when I was still a smoker and covering it for my political column was that uh, watching the city of Vancouver passing all these uh, bylaws banning vaping and hearing the city councilors say, well, we don't know if it's a problem, but you know, just to be safe, we're going to go ahead and do it. <laughs> and that's completely opposite of what it should be in, in a free democracy. You know, you should be allowed to ruin your own life. Yeah. Right. As long as it's not harming others. That's right. And and they've got to prove that it's harming others. Right. And they can't do that yet. No. And actually, there are stories to the contrary that there's no harm. There's no secondhand harm at all. Right. 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 And that's and that's the the, the the crux. And this is where I you know again we'll bring it back into more of a political conversation because they're relying on the precautionary principle, and the precautionary principle is very much from a left side activism. And that's from the environmental movement and the public health movement together where they came up with the precautionary principle that says that, no, 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 in the absence of evidence, right, you can take these steps to deny liberty. Um, in, in fact, one of the things is, is that the absence of as evidence is the reason why you should institute the precautionary principle. That's, that's not right. So we've seen in the United Kingdom, in the UK, we've seen them kind of more embrace vaping and embrace tobacco harm reduction, right? But we haven't necessarily seen that in the United States and Canada. Do you see any differences between the United States and Canada right now? Well, there are a lot of differences just in terms of the, 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 the degree in which the FDA came down, that's industry killing regulation. I mean, the, the, it's not even, oh, we were thinking about just trying to get, no, it was, it's purposefully to try to kill the industry. And Canada had not done that. And I think that Canada is different in the sense that it, it looked like they had were entrenching themselves in some of the same anti-science kind of points of view. But because England had gone so far, they, they pivoted so quickly and so, and so deeply, pervasively, there was no way Canada could ignore its mother country, its relationship with with the UK on an intellectual level and stuff is very strong and that relationship's not there with the US to the same degree and so I think that made a big difference so they're not the same that way from both you know how far they were going to go to kill the industry and also to the only place that you that that can make a difference is what was going on in the UK and and Canadians are more receptive to what's going on in the UK I like to think Regulator Watch 2 has had a little bit more of an impact in Canada because um, we were able to get at it here earlier. It was yeah. already a bit later in the U.S. by when we started covering that. Yeah. What um, what flavor are you vaping? I vape a mix. A mint. A mix. A mix. I'm a mixer. Okay. So um, my primary mix is always with a pina colada 24 milligram that okay. is a 70-30 PG. Okay. All right, and that's always my base. And then, you know, I'll use like a 12, you know, 50-50 on like a, a peach or nectar or some kind of thing. Okay. Always in the fruity kind of area. So all of those flavors that you've just mentioned, if you were in San Francisco, you wouldn't be able to get. What, what, what's your opinion of what happened there? Um, what happened in San Francisco is a tragedy because, oh man, I, it is just so difficult for me to, to do this all the time. Um, I'm going to sound like a broken record. I mean, this is a left issue. Let me just say this. Let me just say this. It, the big problem that's going on in the U.S., and this is primarily a U.S. analysis that I'm going to make here, is that, um, is that the legislation is democratic in origin, nationally, of course, it was Obama, and it's all of his FDA people. Uh, San Francisco, of course, it's the most progressive state, I mean, it's California, so supermajority Democrat. The, the, what, what San Francisco shows is that if vaping is going to succeed in the United States, it's going to do it in spite of the Democrats. Because the Democrats have been showing only spite 
for Bay Bay. Yeah. So if, if anybody thinks that the battle is going to get won in the U.S. without it becoming entrenchedly political, they're wrong. They're just not looking at it. it and I think that fundamentally, when we when I ask, you know, like you about do vapors eat their young, and try to figure out like why there's all that fighting between groups and stuff like that, it keeps coming down to me to to be one thing. If you look at the the group of vapors that exist, say in the U.S., I would gather at least in all of my analysis conversations that a large proportion of vapors probably voted Democrat in their life. Maybe more than once, and maybe card carrying. Let's just say the more Democrats are vapors, and if and if you, if that's the case, they were hit with a this fundamental challenge with vaping, where they had a little red pill go off a little bit, and they realized, oh my God, um, government isn't always there to protect me, but that's what they're always supposed to be. Right. So here they are, all of a sudden, voting Republican for the first time in their life, whether it's locally or nationally or whatever it is, is a single issue. They're suffering from a cognitive dissonance because to fight the battle means that they would have to put their attention to the to their own people to fight the vaping fight. You, you have to fight the Democrats, and if you're a Democrat, how do you do that? Right. Right. If, and the other thing is that you know if you're on the left, you believe that all regulations are good. Think about it. Environmental regulations, of course, they're great. Financial regulations, you bet. Got to get those greedy corporate capitalists and, <laughs> and the hedge fund people. Yeah. There's no such thing as a bad regulation when it comes to financial regulation to left. Environment, finances, all of it. You look through all regulation is good, and then there's this one thing that happens to them in their life where they realize, no, it's not good. It's it, it's causing cognitive dissonance. Groups fight because they can't fight the real enemy. So you asked me um, if if I had hope for the future in the industry, okay? And I said, you know what? I, I, I'm I'm going to hold out. I'm going to have hope until there there's we, I can't have hope anymore. I'll ask you the same question. Are you hopeful for the future of the industry? In the U.S., because I think it's important to separate it Absolutely, geographically. Yeah. I think it's a tough road to hoe in the U.S. You've mentioned it, I'll say it. I mean, the losses just keep stacking up. Yeah. And and the big one, the smoke smoke free in court. That, the right that, to be smoke free. Right, right to be smoke free. That was, you know, full on, you know, loss. And you would hope that that wasn't going to be happening as we're moving forward, as more people are understanding uh, uh, the truth about vaping. But every single media organization from the mainstream media side, they've got no time for this issue. And if they do, there's no way that they're going to cover it from a, from a harm reduction point of view or from the point of view on the vaping side. I, I'll say another thing too to, to be even less hopeful on that is that if they were to soften how they cover the issue, they would do it by first equivocating. So you go through a year or two or three or four or five of where you'll just be happy that they mentioned vaping and they didn't say it was going to kill you because they'll equivocate. They might say, oh, some new research has come out that said vaping might not be as bad as we thought, but other people still say that there's formaldehyde and there's still this. Yeah. So they'll equivocate. So we're not even in the position yet right now where you, you're even close to mainstream media covering this with any kind of clear objectivity. And considering the fact that the, the news media has become so entrenched as it is in non-truth, um, and the side they're speaking to and activating so much are the very people that are against vaping from the, 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 yeah. the left-right paradigm. paradigm. I don't know, I'm not hopeful uh, unless that the U.S. advocates, industry, and the general vapors can figure out a way to all activate and work together. It's gonna cost a lot of money, yeah. a lot of time, and there's no time left. Yeah. Why, why do you think the science, even the science, is being ignored. Why is that? Because science is poison. Um, in a column I've got uh, that's just been out, um, I talk about social justice and I look at how the word social is what F.A. Hayek, the Nobel uh, Prize winning economist wrote, that he said that social is a weasel word. And what it does is it, it takes all of the meaning away from the words uh, that it's supposed to qualify. So social justice, social science, everything else, the words are meaningless following that. Um, now, this 
may or may not be welcome to your viewers, but science was spoiled back in the 1880s when Marxist economic philosophies were deemed to be called, and this is what it is, uh, scientific socialism. And when Marx talks about uh, his economic policies, he calls it the science. So the debasing of science happened, you know, 150 years ago, happened from the left. The, the, the only science is, is Marxist science in their mind. So that kind of thought, and this is pure, you know, you can look it up on Google if you want, uh, is why science is debased, right? So it was easy to do it in climate change. I know a lot of people think, oh, I'm not, I, I, I think the earth is warming. Yeah. I, I just don't believe in the holy trinity that you need to have, which is that the earth is warming, man is doing it, and it's gonna be a catastrophe. And when I see people in their faces screaming with rage, you know, over climate change, you gotta ask, well, why is that? And then you gotta look at it. It's the same thing with vaping, right? They, they are, the people that are adamant against it, it doesn't make sense. It denies science. They, they don't even want to look at it. And the same infrastructures that support, uh, say, climate change science, it's the exact same organizations. When I did my last piece that connected climate change and, 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 and vaping, which I know some people loved it, other people just thought it was crazy. I'll tell you, I went to uh, the main web, uh, the main funding organizations, government organizations in the US, and I tracked all of last year's funding. I can't put this in a television piece, but I do and look at it before I go on and put a piece like this together. There was, you know, just through this one federal agency, about $160 million in climate change funding research for just one year, and every single one of the funding that, uh, projects that were researched were all predicated on global warming is happening, and it's killing the planet, and it's <laughs> going to be a catastrophe. And so once you already start with that, yeah. and then you fund everything down from that, <laughs> You're not going to get anything else. So you can say science, science, science all you want. You ask any real scientist and they'll tell you there's no such thing as truth in science. It's a meaning-making process. And um, and look, last thing on the, on the science things you asked. You know, 15 years ago, the scientists were still on the standard model of physics. 15 years ago, they were still believed in the Big Bang. 15 years ago, 20 years ago, they still knew what made up the universe. 20 years later, they don't know what makes up 95% of the universe. They don't know what 95% of the matter is. So how in the hell do they know that vaping is gonna hurt you? Or that climate change is happening? And it not it interesting that you use the number like 95%? It, I know, it's, <laughs> it's the same number. Yep. Yeah. So you asked me uh, an interesting question, which was, do you think um, vapors eat their young? You just kind of touched on that. Let me ask you uh, kind of a different question. Do you think in certain aspects, the vaping industry has become its own worst enemy? Uh, has it become its own worst enemy? Um, the only area that that would be the case, and it's something you and I have spoken about uh, in one of our pieces before, is the the flavor and marketing issue, right? So that is the problem because there, it's it, it it's inescapable that the, there's marketing that may not be targeting kids, but the flavors look like they are. And, yeah, sure. You know, and so at some point that's got to get really sorted out. Uh, and if it doesn't get sorted out, the government will sort it out. Yeah, well, they, they I think they want to sort it out by shutting down the industry, that's though, and that's a problem. That's the problem. That's that's the problem. That's so the problem. that's right. So the, so it, the industry has got to get that sorted out first. Otherwise, I mean, it's just a big, huge, ugly, you know, monkey that's sitting there. Yeah. Right? And so the other thing, though, there's something that the vaping industry can't help because it's a part of their success. And may I'll you know I'll share this. I've got this sense from from those that are anti-vaping some from the public health side is this overall distaste that they've had for the amount of money that vaping industry people make <laughs> and how quick that's been it's almost a bit grotesque to them and there's nothing you can really do about that it's a sign of success but I think the vaping industry needs to understand that that that's very success is hurting them in the eyes of those that want to clamp down on vaping. 
So it's almost like the vaping industry has to grease those hands, is that what you're saying? There's a maxim when it comes to uh, regulation in that a government will come into an unregulated market to uh, force them into uh, greasing the wheels, you bet. So, and what almost always happens is an, a very major lobbying effort blows um, that's extremely well funded. Now, here's the deal, you're not spending enough money on lobbyists. The industry is holding on to too much money. They're not understanding that, they, that they've got to throw millions and millions of dollars at lobbying. And they should have been doing it two years ago. They right. should have been doing it a year ago. They still should be doing it now. Right. They are not going to get away with not doing it. You have to do it, right? And I can't recall if it was either Google or Facebook. I think it might be Google. But, you know, they were invited to Washington. Uh, I think it was Google. Did not. Uh, 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 reply with the appropriate amount of okay lobbying which they should have and they get into a whole bunch of problems right whereas Facebook did and Facebook isn't in the kind of problem right. that Google is having. So Brent, let's do the, uh, the final words here, the closing. Based on everything that, that you've learned from all the pieces that you've done, do you have any recommendations or suggestions to the industry or maybe just to vapors in general? Well, to vapors who don't, to vapors who are not involved, they need to get involved. Um, but it's an, it's an interesting issue. We, you know, this word gets used a lot called advocacy. Regulator Watch, we take a side with our content, and that's clear. Sure. But we aren't advocates to the to that extent. We cover advocacy, of course, and we cover the issues, right? But for instance, we, we are not an advocate. Um, that kind of sounds like me a little bit. Yeah, to a lot of yeah, degree, because sure. you, are, you are in it. Right. Right. But I'm not necessarily an advocate. Right. Correct. Right. right. Um, but you don't cover the issues in your video. Correct. Right? Where, where we're, that's what we specifically do. Of course. Um, but I think the advice on that is that I think that the word advocacy needs to be relooked at. It shouldn't be such a, 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 draw, a hard line that, uh, you know, you're either an advocate or you're not. It, there seems to be a hard dividing line there. Vapors need to understand if they want to hold on to their vaping, right, like anything, it has, the only thing that's going to happen is in numbers. It's in, just in numbers. And so, for those, so it's up. It's to the industry and the advocates to figure out the right way to galvanize uh, that huge uh, amount of vapors. And I'm not certain that asking them to sign another petition or make another phone call again and again and again is enough. You can ask anybody, though. You've got to have that political pressure. Um, but there's got to be a better way. Maybe a march. Yeah. Something. It seems like it's getting to that point, doesn't it? Yeah, I agree with you. But good luck. Yeah, I know. Well, Brent, listen, thank you so much for actually taking the time to allow, allow me to interview you. Uh, I think you guys are doing a fantastic job with the Regulator Watch. Keep those videos coming. I know they're, they're, they're helping and people are looking at them. So thank you very much for what you do. Well, thank you, Phil. Appreciate it. So there you go. Um, from the the mind of Brent Stafford, I thought it was a really interesting interview. It was it was, was kind of cool to get his perspective and his point of view on, on the whole industry and what's going on with vaping. And I hope you found it interesting as well. Okay, so I got a couple of people uh, left to thank and uh, we're going to wrap this video up. That's pretty much all I have for interviews. Uh, pretty much all I have from the event. But uh, let's get to the the last not a contest winner uh before we wrap this up so what was up for grabs the other uh, revenger kit from vaporesso and also the uh, the Inikin thermo now i promise this so i am going to send it but uh from what i understand this may not be the final final edition of the other uh, thermo so when i do get that in i'll i'll show you guys any differences that i could see anyway all right so uh, what was the contest the contest was this what is it the, i was thinking of a number the number was a whole number between one and three i almost said two one and three a couple of people were funny they guessed one they guessed three of course that's funny but you're disqualified from the contest uh, the correct answer was two let's give it away give it away give it away now all right guys here we are in random.org this is a list randomizer just like we always do for this contest 293 of you got the answer correct and entered the correct way let's find out who won good luck everybody the wiener is Pete Chips, congratulations to you, Pete Chips. You are the big wiener. 
All right, congratulations to you, Pete Chips. You're the big wiener today. You know what you got to do. Get an email to me at pbasardo at tasteyourjuice.com using the same email that you entered the contest in so I can verify who you are, and I will get some uh, information from you and get this out into the mail just as soon as I can. All right, so like I said, a few last-minute thank yous here, and we will wrap this one up to uh, to Charlie and to Shy and to everybody involved with the, uh, the CVE events. Um, excellent job, guys. Keep it up, and thanks for having us back. To Ross and to everybody involved, with the CVA. Uh, thanks for the invitation to the Hero Awards. I'd like to see those uh, continue to, to go on and thank you for your work and advocacy. To Sherry and the crew from Lifestyle eSigs, uh, thanks for the hospitality and thanks for the fun night out. To the entire Pacific Smoke crew, thanks for the invitation to dinner and the uh, the amazing uh, Tower of Lobster at that restaurant. It, it really is something that you got to experience if you have the opportunity. To all of the uh, the Canadian vapors and to all of the other uh, vendors that were at the uh, the show, thank you for the continued hospitality. Uh, we really, really do enjoy ourselves at the Canadian shows. And then finally, finally, to uh, this lady right here, Irene, Irene Stewart. Um. During the uh, the panel talk that we had, Irene had a uh, question or a comment, and it was kind of directed in, in in my way. And Irene got uh, pretty emotional. She was a little bit nervous uh, when she was asking the question. And it, it's just vaping can be a very emotional thing for a lot of people because they've struggled their entire lives with cigarettes, and all of a sudden they found something that freed them from that. And and a lot of people get emotional. A lot of people are, are very appreciative. Uh, for the support they found in the community or from their friends or from a vape shop. Um, and when when I saw that, uh, I had to run down there and, and give Irene a big hug and, and kind of stand with her as she went through her question. And her question or, or comment was, you know, about support and, you know, where did, where did you get the support? And she was very appreciative uh, for the support that she got um, when she was transitioning into vaping. And, you know, I just say, look for, look for somebody, look for a shop, look for a forum, look for a Facebook page where you feel comfortable comfortable and they don't belittle you because of, uh, of how you vape or what you vape or, or, you know, just any of your choices in vaping. The community needs to be supportive of, of all folks who want to be vaping, no matter what their age or what their color or what their style or anything. I mean, you know, for me, I continue to say that this is not about tricks and clouds, um, although they may be fun, they may be engaging, they may be helping people as well, but I don't think that should be the face of vaping. I think the face of vaping should be tobacco harm reduction and saving lives, okay? So that is how I will wrap this up. Uh, well, of course, you know, I did have to say goodbye to Dimitri, who is in Greece right now. Um, um, and it, parting is always such sweet sorrow. I got you. I'm going to miss you so much. I love you, man. Are we done yet? Okay, that's enough. Dude. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's it folks i hope you found some of the information here interesting uh maybe a little bit comical as always thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you again soon can i taste your juice